Today is Monday, November 13th, 2023. We are the second car in the Amanusik Ravine parking lot, which is a little bit icy. The roads were good though. We're heading up to Mount Monroe and Mount Washington today. Looks like it should be clear with these forecasts, some undercast, which I think it's clearing out. I think that was earlier. Um, and then it should have winds like five to 20 miles an hour on Mount Washington. They pick up later in the day, but we should be down before that. So here we go. We haven't been on a presidential in quite some time, so this will be good. There's a view out. Washington is sort of behind the trees right there, but it's clear. This is in Music River. We will be up to Gem Pool pretty pretty quickly now. We put on micro spikes at one mile in. Uh, I could have done it sooner, but there was enough exposed rock that you didn't really need to until after the split with the, um, the spur that goes to the cog. But making better time with them on for sure now. It's pretty much packed snow. Also some ice flows, but here we go. Nice view up through the trees, blue skies. This is Gem Pool, so there's blue sky. It's a little bit frozen, but the water's still running there. And then it comes down here. You have to do a rock hop get across and it flows down and meets up with the Ammanusik right down there and then once you're past this is where the fun really begins because it's been easy gentle hiking and now we're going to be going up and there's going to be some very icy parts which can make it very challenging if you don't have full crampons, but I, I don't think there's enough ice for that yet. Let's hope. It's looking out at Mount Deception. This is the place where you have to cross. It can be a little tricky sometimes. Looks like it's gonna be okay today. And then nice frozen waterfall up there. The trail crosses here. We go back into the woods. That's a pretty steep climb, but we're not that far actually from Lakes of the Cloud. Lakes of the Clouds hut. So I think that that's it's probably not visible. Right down there is the cog station. Look for it. Yeah. We are up in the alpine zone, nearly to the lake. Lakes of the Clouds hut. Things are very frosty now. very top of Washington's um, antennas and stuff sticking up right there. All right, we're gonna pop out of the trees for good, right up around the corner here. We are up at the hut now. Got some nice rye mice on the signs. Love that, and also on the side of the hut. Pretty cool. This part right here is in direct sun, so it's all melted off. If I come up here a little bit and look back at the hut. There's Washington. The side of the hut that gets the sun because we come up behind the hut and it's completely encrusted. Okay, what so we're going to go up to Summit Monroe and that is not the summit, but it's pretty close after that. And we'll come back, head out to Washington. We are up on the summit of Monroe and it is amazing. The wind is 
definitely light and variable. I mean, I don't even think it's two miles an hour. And then looking out to the east, you get all these layers and layers of mountains, which probably doesn't translate very well on a GoPro, but it's so beautiful. There's Kerrigan in the center. And then you get looking to the west, looking down Crawford Path. So Little Monroe, and then Franklin, Eisenhower, Pierce. I can't see on my screen. Pierce is behind there. And then over there is Jackson and Webster. And then Willie is behind that with all the slidey stuff on, on the side. Willie Field and Tom, the Bonds, Franconia Ridge sticking up in the distance with Lincoln Slide kind of looking snowy. Really nice. There's like, there's no wind. There's Jefferson right there. And then John is standing right on this actual summit. There's like a metal pin up there. And that's Washington. And Lakes of the Clouds is right behind. That's the bump you see when you're standing down there looking up here. Okay, and we saw two other hikers so far. They parked <coughs> in Yamanusik Ravine with a, where we parked also. And that's it. I recognize both of them, which is from Instagram, which is kind of cool. Ah, what, a, what a banger day. It's nice. All right. Keep going. We are at a trail junction right now, and that's the very top of the antenna sticking up on Washington. It's only a few tenths from here. And then this sign, super encrusted. Look at that. That's probably three feet long. That one in the middle. And then the, nobody's been out that way. Looking back at Monroe. And you might be able to see the other hikers. There's two people coming along. I know, I'm recording. Maybe you can see them now. See that line of Cairns? There's just a little tiny bit of cloud coming out of the dry river. John is up on the summit. He's just checking the temperature, which I would say is upper 20s. Is it really? Yep. The sun makes it feel quite warm. He said it's 21. And what's the wind is like nothing, right? Well, I never got a wind, a wind speed reading. Well, it's it's so low. But... I don't have on gloves. I had my hat off. I only put on my Alpine Start wind layer and I unzipped it. I would have taken it off except I didn't feel like stopping, but it's not windy. It's amazing amazing conditions. So let's walk over. Look at all these cool frost feathers. Obviously they had some wind up here at some point. And up here is probably the most snow we've seen. It's kind of drifting right here. It's probably six inches to a foot more up against the this is where there's sometimes a sign for Crawford Path, I think. Or well, maybe it's for Mount Washington State Park. I think that might be what it is. This is the Adams Building. It's all closed up. We'll walk up here to the overlook area. my fifth mile. I can't believe there's nobody out. What a nice day. I guess people have real jobs. Alright, so this is going to be a nice view to the Northern Presidentials and Great Gulf. Jefferson.
Jefferson, Adams, and Madison. Down there is, I don't know my crags, Ball Crag and Nelson Crag somewhere. This is the auto road. Let me get my finger in here. Where is it? Down here. And this is, can I get it? The Cog Railway. Super nice day. I'm standing in a bit of rime ice that has fallen off the um, fencing up here. Very cool. We are now walking down next to the cog. There's the summit right up there. Here comes John. He said something to me. I don't know what he said. And then looking out to the Northern Presidentials. And there's a nice little crispy layer of snow along the cog and some areas of deeper drifts. But so far, it's been really good. And the cog itself, I think, is running up until the first stop at uh, Wombeck Station, which is not very high up. Usually people ride it up there, then they get off and there's fires going and they have hot chocolate and they can look out over the Southern Presidentials, Eisenhower. I don't even know if you can see Monroe from there. I don't think you can see Washington either, but Something, something that keeps people coming, so. And it's okay to walk down next to it, especially in the winter. Um, you wouldn't want to do it in the summer. The cog is running all the way up. It's dirty and gross, and there's all kinds of, um, like, remnants of the cog when they were building it, and pieces of metal, and conduit, all kinds of stuff that's kind of yucky. But when it's covered with snow, it's good. Occasionally, there's like a pipe or something that is covered with the snow, but it's not that far down. And if you step on it, bare booting, you just take a digger. It's super slippery, but hopefully there'll be so little snow down there that we'll see that kind of stuff. But here we go. Nice, nice views. Franconia Ridge. We are now down and road walking back. If you park <clears throat> as a hiker at the Cog lot, this is the lot right here. So there's one car in it. It's $10 per person per day to park there. And if you are road walking back, it's I think it's like 0.4 back to Amusic Ravine, so we're just going to do that. You can also take Jewel or Amanusic back. Even they junction up with the near the cog also, but you'd have to backtrack a little bit on that spur that accesses them. So it's not really, eh, we just want to be done. But I don't know if you can tell, lots and lots of clouds building in now. Lots. And this is looking back. So still totally clear up there. What a nice day it was. Okay. Saw, so, uh, let me think. One, two, three, four, five. Five hikers today. Two others that came up the way we came up. One guy who came up Tuckerman Ravine, and a couple who I think came up the cog. Here's a little historical marker for the cog railway. Let's go see what it says. Completed in 1869 for $139,500, this unique railway was built through the Genius and enterprise of Herrick and Walter Aiken of Franklin and Sylvester Marsh and Sil of Franklin. 
and Sylvester, Sylvester Marsh of Campton. Over three miles long, average grade is one foot and four. Made safe by toothed wheel and ratchet, it is the second steepest in the world and the first of its type. Okay.